National Parks is Yellowstone. It's located in the northwestern corner of the state of Wyoming, with some overlap in Montana and Idaho, and it covers roughly 9,000 square kilometers of land. Yellowstone is well known for its abundance of wildlife and its many geothermal features. That's pretty sick. Particularly Old Faithful, a geyser that regularly blasts water 50 full meters into the air approximately every 90 minutes. What the Over fuck? 4 million people visit the park to take in all of these sites every year. I bet so many people die there though. National parks where murder happens. But Yellowstone is harboring a dangerous secret. It's located just atop a slowly ticking time bomb. He literally just deleted his vids with him. Why would he want to affiliate further? I already described this, dude. I already described this. Having a non-confrontational conversation with Jordan Peterson, especially when Jordan Peterson's, uh, you know, point of view, especially in recently, has become like balls to the wall, openly conservative, makes it seem like you are playing a role personally in the the red pilling alt-right uh pipeline okay having a conversation with jordan peterson that is more contentious where you can actually offer pushback on the other hand is entirely different it's the difference between platforming and discussion okay i would not have deleted the videos regardless or or uh, make them unlisted regardless but that was ethan's decision on his own he's an adult uh, he did not want to be seen as someone who was, you know, advocating for Jordan Peterson any further. These are videos that got millions and millions and millions of views. Okay. Hey, my girlfriend said, can we watch MasterChef? Dude, the world is going to end. We're looking at how it's going to end with Yellowstone. Uh, and, and you're over here talking about MasterChef. We're going to get to MasterChef in a little bit. Bomb. The largest supervolcano, not only on the North American continent, but also anywhere on the planet right now. And it has a bit of a troubled past. You see, the Yellowstone caldera that we know today was actually formed by several titanic volcanic eruptions that took place a long, long time ago. One of them took place 2.1 million years ago, another that took place 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent taking place approximately 664,000 years ago, long before Homo sapiens had ever arisen over in Africa. Not me, bro. I'm Bill Dibber. I was there. Of those that surrounds the Yellowstone Lake ended up ejecting so much. This is fake news, brother. The world is 6,000 years old. <laughs> That's right. Jesus Christ was riding a velociraptor back in the day. Much material during the blast that it left a 55 by 80 kilometer depression in the ground that we now know today as the current Yellowstone called it. Why won't you uh, show JVP answering a wildly anti-Semitic question, please? What? To start millions of them to death. If Jewish individuals hated Christian Ukrainians enough to starve millions of them to death, what the fuck is this, dude? What? I don't care. We're talking about fucking Yellowstone. Dara. And each of these three colossal events is what is known geologically as a super eruption, meaning that on the Volcano Explosivity Index, they would all be listed as a magnitude 8 or higher, and at a minimum, at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material was ejected during the most recent blast, which is well, insane to comprehend, because that would basically be enough volcanic ash, lava, and other material to bury the entire state of Texas oh, let's go. one I'm and a kidding. half meters deep. I'm kidding. If we look at the geological history of Earth, we know that on average, the planet suffers from one of these supervolcanic blasts roughly once every 100,000 years. The most recent such occurrence was the New Zealand Lake Topo volcano, which blew up approximately 26,500 years ago. But by looking at the history of the Yellowstone eruption specifically, a disturbing pattern begins to look like it's emerging. The second most recent explosion took place about 800,000 years after the third most recent, while the most recent one happened about 636,000 years after that one. 
And as mentioned previously, this most recent event... Okay, I don't care about this, bro. Get, get to the fucking fun stuff. Like, what happens when it blows up, dog? That an eruption at Yellowstone any time in the near future is exceedingly unlikely, and the volcano's current status is dormant. Based on over 30 years' worth of research, the evidence gathered suggests that while, yeah, it's theoretically possible, a mega eruption isn't likely to happen any time within the next 10 thousand years. Keep in mind that on the geologic timeline, it took roughly 800,000 years between event number 3 and event 2, which is 136,000 years longer than we've gone now since event 1. But that's not really any fun. If Yellowstone defied all of the odds and blew up today anyway, how bad would it actually be? Let's do some speculation. The whole Yellowstone volcanic system First of all, it wouldn't just like pop off on its own. There would be tectonic movement leading up to it. So we would probably die, especially on the fucking San Andreas fault line. We would die way before that. Okay. So GG's for us. And then all the other fucking mountain time Andes would be like, oh, they're dying down there in California. Oh, uh, fucking in Los Angeles. Well, let's go. I mean, let's get the fuck out of here. And then they would run away. But they would also die probably because it's too gigantic, right? I feel like it would wipe out everyone in America, especially. ...them itself is huge. Like, it's way bigger than you probably think it is. For example, the magma chamber that lies underneath the national park today is estimated to be a single connected chamber that is... Yellowstone will explode on 9th of July, 2031. Mark my chat. Dog, what the fuck do you mean mark your chat? Twitch won't exist by that point. 60 kilometers probably. long, 29 kilometers wide, and 8 kilometers deep and holds an absolutely absurd amount of molten lava. This chamber is fed by a gigantic- Damn, it's been a bust, dude. It's bussin'. Yellowstone is bussin', dude. Fuck. Yo, let Caldussy out, dude. You know what I mean? Let that Caldussy explode, dude. He's got, oh my God, the Volcussy on Yellowstone is, oh, diabolical, dude. Okay, I'll stop plume of molten rock that wells up from hundreds of miles beneath the Earth's surface. And fascinatingly, as this magma rises up into the chamber and cools, hey, the ground above will periodically who need, who need they call Dussy 8? <laughs> rise and fall. And because of this, the elevation of ground within the Yellowstone Park will fluctuate up or down by a few inches a year. Now, before any massive eruption would take place, it would very likely be preceded by a huge amount of seismic activity. Basically a warning sign that something really bad was about to happen. Oh, so I was right. There'd be fucking hella seismic activity. Many seismologists <laughs> estimate that there could be substantial earthquakes preceding any blast at Yellowstone that would last for weeks or even months beforehand as rock below get- Yeah, Yellowstone would be like, I'm finna bust, and then he would do this. broken up by as the Yellowstone O face magma as it surges further and further up towards the surface. Here, pressure would continue building and building and building and with increasing intensity until, with nowhere left to go, the magma would explode through the ground in a cataclysmic eruption with debris getting flung as high ah! as 24 kilometers up into the stratosphere. Shortly afterwards, the lava <laughs> What? There would be, there would be lava 24 kilometers? 24, dude, that is a gigantic zit, dude. That's when you pop one and it like hits. That's when you pop one and it hits the fucking mirror. Except the world is popping its gigantic zit and it hits the fucking moon. Obviously not the moon, but like you get what I'm saying flows themselves would engulf the surrounding area and anywhere inside a range of 65 kilometers from the epicenter would be in danger of becoming literally buried in lava, which is basically the entire territory of the national park itself. Oh shit, GG's to the fucking mountain boys, dude. Uh-oh, guess what? Beyond this immediate danger of burning, the blast would eject a thousand cubic kilometers of material up oh, into no. the sky. Stop. Stop. Creating a type of umbrella oh, no. cloud, expanding oh, evenly in all directions, okay. and darkening the skies over most of the North American continent. All right, well, we, we fucked up. I spoke too soon, you know?
This cloud would rain down toxic volcanic ash across the entire mainland United States. Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah will, however, experience the most significant devastation and will probably be almost completely buried with up to a meter thick of hot volcanic ash. Denver, Salt Lake City, and Boise will be severely damaged or just outright destroyed. Oh, what now, mountain time, huh? What the fuck now, mountain time bitches, dude? That's right. Meanwhile, across the Midwest, Nevada, and Southern Alberta, there would still be inches of ash coating everything in sight. Even the Atlantic and Pacific coasts would likely see a small dusting, although much of it would be highly dependent on the time of year and yeah, weather patterns small dusting. involved. I'll take it. Basically, if you're looking at this map, everything in blue would be completely wiped out. Everything in purple would be highly damaged. Everything in orange would be sort of damaged. And everything in yellow would be mildly damaged. The North American continent would take a pretty significant bruise. But the worst part of all of- I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like that volcanic ash covering the entire fucking North American continent would destroy life as we this know it. This would obviously be the terrible toll that it would take on human life. With a full meter of ash possibly being poured down upon you and your city, even if you are not close enough to see the volcano, it could still possibly kill not only you, but also plants, animals, and even crush buildings with the sheer weight of dense ash deposits. Even just a few inches of ash can completely ruin farmland, clog up roadways, and create serious respiratory issues for large amounts of the population. Not to mention that it would take out- Yeah, except people in California are like, what do you mean? So like every weekend when there's a wildfire during wildfire season, we're ready. See? Dog, I've been training my lungs for this moment, okay? Living in California, living in Los Angeles, I've been training my lungs. I've been, I've been pumping it full of ash for the moment that this happens. So I can just be like, I go outside and jog, you know what I mean? Key infrastructure, contaminate water supplies, down power lines, prevent nearly all air travel on the entire continent, and even take out electrical transformers, which would bring America's power grid to a complete and utter halt. What could be even worse is that the ash would likely wipe out the entire Midwest's crop of corn and soybeans, and could no! even poison the- Not our corn! Never mind, brother. Oh, fuck. That better not happen. Oh, brother, that's not good. There's no corn. How do we do livestock feed? If there's no corn... How do we get our hot fructose corn syrup, brother? That's no, no shot. No, no siree. We can't be doing that. Farmland for an entire generation. This would make food production within the United States severely crippled. And that America would destroy everything. America is over-reliant on corn for everything. We'd be done. Would likely have to rely on food imports from other continents in order to survive. But beyond the absolute chaos going on across North America, a volcanic eruption this big would also have a major impact on the global climate and affect everybody who lives on this planet in some way. You see, volcanoes can emit sulfur aerosols that are capable of reflecting sunlight back away from the Earth, which causes the climate to cool down. For example, most recently, when Mount Pintabu erupted in the Philippines... In I can see Republicans being like, what do you mean the climate's cooled down? It's still hot in here. It's still hot here, libtards. What the fuck do you mean? It's actually a conspiracy. It was the Jewish spice lasers that destroyed the corn subsidies and the corn all around the country, brother. Don't believe it. Don't believe them, libtards. They're making it up. The ash is actually good for you. Go outside. Keep going to Applebee's. <laughs> In 1991, it's estimated that it cooled the planet by an entire one degree for at least a few years. And that's not to mention the Great Tambora eruption, which occurred in Indonesia in 1815. That eruption, which was rated as a Category 7 on the Explosivity Index, is believed to have cooled the planet enough to damage crops around the world, potentially even causing several severe famines in certain areas. There was even snowfall during the month of June in the eastern half of the United States that year as it became known as the year without a summer. These eruptions, however, were relatively tiny events when compared to what a supervolcanic yellow- Can you explain why the heating of the Earth would be bad? Wouldn't more fertile land appear in Siberia and other regions? 
I mean, dude, I don't know what to tell you other than like, you know, when it fucking heats, the water levels rise, right? Like, do I, do I need to tell you what happens when the water, water levels rise? Also, many areas where there currently are people living that rely on agriculture will no longer be able to rely on agricultural production because, you know, their vegetation is ruined. Their crops are ruined. Uh, so, no, global warming is not good. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Are we moving to Siberia? Also, we don't know what the fuck's under the permafrost. That's another problem. New parasitic creatures, diseases that we haven't seen in fucking thousands of years that are going to be, uh, you know, potentially uncovered and spread throughout the planet. Yeah, you think COVID-19 is bad? Welcome to COVID, you know, 2000 BC. Stone eruption might. Oh, there's also methane too, right? In the permafrost. Yeah. Trapped gases that'll destroy the ozone layer further, also increasing uh, you know, or also decreasing the protection that you naturally have, the earth naturally has from uh dangerous rays. You know, you got that. Okay. COVID-2 thawed and dangerous. Also, think about the, the extreme weather conditions that are now commonplace. Like gigantic fucking hurricanes. Uh, gigantic tornadoes. Things that just like destroy mainland US, like hit mainland US and fuck it up. That would also increase in frequency and magnitude and size. So, or, or continue to. So there's also that as well. I don't know, man. I don't know how anyone would think that that is actually cool. Like what you, you think like we're going to be able to fucking magically move to Siberia. Then there's also the geopolitical conflict between world powers that are then going to want to explore uh, the potential vast, possible, I don't know if there is, natural resources that are, that are hidden in areas that are now considered fertile, okay? My lord, so many awesome things will happen. Look like... Although it's hard to say with any kind of certainty, scientists estimate that with the amount of material that would be ejected into the atmosphere, the planet might cool by as much as 10 full degrees for an entire decade following a cataclysmic eruption at Yellowstone. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a meteorologist, uh, physicist, meteorolo meteorologic physicist, and he told me in a study he saw how global famine due to climate crisis will be the worst. In history, because under capitalism, the rich will stockpile food and fuck us up. Yup. That is the main problem. Okay. The main problem is our, is, uh, our, our commodity production, uh, our mode of production. Okay. And our distribution. The main problem is not climate change. It's the way that we operate. It's the way that we have organized society under a capitalist understanding. We already have an abundance of food. And yet there is a there are major logistical hurdles to solve. But the number one hurdle to solve overall is that uh, if you were to actually utilize the surplus of food that you create, you know, then the entire economy falls apart around agricultural and food production. Because then you lower the value or make the value of food zero. Then who's going to fucking pay for it? How are you going to continue producing commodities? How are you going to continue producing food? if the value of food is zero because you're just simply giving it to people, okay? The profit motive is the number one issue here. Then, then we get down to the, the geopolitical shifts, the geopolitical issues that come along with climate change. Right now, the, the uh, immigration policies that you see in the United States of America, the white nativist immigration policies that you see in the United States of America 
is simply a trial balloon, okay? It's nothing in comparison to the untold amount of cruelty that we are going to subject climate refugees to. Uh, you are already seeing climate refugees, but in numbers that are uh, numbers that are minuscule in comparison to what it would look like when entire regions' agricultural crops are completely wiped out. Part of the reason why there is any conflict in Syria is also a consequence of the agitation and climate change. Uh, climate change's inadvertent effects on geopolitical struggle. What happens when crops run out? What happens when crops dry out? What happens when there's no more food production? People get uneasy. People get upset. They want to dismantle and topple governments. Governments then, uh, the governments then decide to uh, increase the stress, the pressure on that uh, on those people because they are not getting help from other countries, uh, both in the region or uh, overall, anywhere around the world. And then, you know, instead of being able to feed those people, now they're fucking beating the shit out of them. Then, larger imperialist powers decide this is an opportunity to maybe explore some uh, new pipelines uh, and engage in a proxy war with other superpowers or the main imperialist superpower. I'm, of course, talking about the Russia-United uh, States proxy war in Syria, Russia's interest being, uh, you know, regional dominance and also additional uh, natural gas pipelines uh, that they could potentially control versus the United States, uh, you know, permanent interest in dominating the Middle East. That creates millions and millions of displaced refugees. That creates political instability in Europe. Then you have Nazis who are like, I don't want these people that don't look like us coming here and changing our fucking uh, values and our world. It's all interconnected. Yes, but you could call that a theory, a game theory. All right, let's continue. Obviously, a change in the climate. Wait, none of that is a theory, by the way. Everything I just did, mentioned is like already... Some of the things I just mentioned have already happened. I'm just saying that the magnitude and frequency is going to increase. And the pain that we cause others is going to increase as a consequence of that. That huge would cause a global catastrophe as crops around the world would I be affected. I just described to you the Syrian Likely civil war, the but of hundreds it's nothing of in comparison to what is to come. And doing untold amounts of damage. FEMA, the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, even published a rough estimate on what it thought the total damage cost to the United States would be in the event that Yellowstone ever actually blew. In that report, they estimated that it would cause roughly three... Uh-oh. That's not very good for the economy, I think. ...trillion dollars in damages, or almost 14% of the entire United States GDP. So, yeah, Yellowstone blowing up like this would be really... I don't know. I don't think we would be going to the moon in that point, boys. It just seems like... How is... My man said, how is the Syrian civil war related to climate change? Climate change forced Assad to gas his own people? You are clown world, dude. You are quite literally clown-brained. Please stop. I never advocate to stop reading American media, but like this is a person who 100% should stop. I already mentioned the sequence of events that led to Assad uh, uh, using brutal measures to suppress uh, uprisings in, its, in his own country, okay? You completely just avoided the first like 12 minutes of that rant and also, I guess, avoided the secondary part of that rant as well where i said brutal measures to suppress uh you know rebellions in his own country so fucking stupid dude really bad for everybody but it's more than likely not gonna actually happen during any of our lifetimes unless one of you becomes immortal because if you look at the frequency of the last three big eruptions, the odds of one happening in any given year are roughly 0.0001%, which is actually lower than the odds of civilization getting wiped out by an asteroid. So this isn't really a problem that you have to worry too much about right now. 
But maybe there's another problem or challenge that you are facing right now for a big personal goal or a passion project that you've been really excited to start, but you're not quite sure that you have the skills required to do it just yet. Come on, bro. You can't be fucking telling us about how Yellowstone's like Volkussy is going to fucking implode and then be like, but you should get your skills. You should get your skills up and your money up by going to fucking Skillshare.com. <laughs> Pretty funny.